what year did you get into YouTube yourself? And how did those, or did that skill set help you to excel? I started playing with it as early as 2006. That channel no longer exists. And I tried several YouTube ventures with friends of mine um, at the time that just didn't work out. A lot of times group projects, uh, too many cooks in the kitchen, that too many you know, chiefs, it doesn't work out. Um, and that, in a way, discouraged me from pursuing it in any way or a setback. Back then, we were trying to be, you know, filmmakers. And I was very into visual effects and um, special effects and 3D and things like that back then. Even with my limited um, hardware, I was pushing the limit of what I could do with that hardware and software. Um, you know, we wanted to kind of like make Star Wars type stuff. It was, um, it was pretty dope. But it just didn't work out. And eventually... What happened was in 2009, I bought um, and saved up for um, a, an HD video camera because back then being able to have 1080 was a big deal when it first happened. So I saved up and I bought the Sony uh, camera. Um, I have a version of it somewhere on one of these shelves, actually. It's like this little tiny thing. It looks like a toy camera today, but it was a big deal. It had a flip out screen. So you could see yourself when you record. That's a big deal back then. This is like 2009. And so the first video on my main channel, my Roberta Blake YouTube channel was in 2009. Now I wouldn't say that's the beginning of me becoming a YouTuber or content creator. Cause I literally only uploaded like four videos a year, <laughs> like <laughs> for a while there. Um, I didn't start doing YouTube in any serious intentional way. And I didn't have an audience until uh, 2013, July, 2013, when I started making weekly tutorial videos uh, teaching people design and things like that and answering questions about um, the career. How do you become a designer? How do you become a freelancer? How do you become a video editor? Um, showing people affordable cheap camera gear because that's what I could afford. Um, how to work with cheap laptops because that's what I had. So um, very budget friendly um, things to teach people. And again, I was coming from the position of, look, I don't have a lot, but I figured out how to make a living. I don't have a lot to work with. Most of the things I have cost $500 or less, $300 or less, $200 or less, but I make it work and here's what I do. And that I felt mattered. And I felt having that information accessible and available and something people could search on and they'd find the answers coming from me in a way that they might understand or relate to me um, was important. And so I started doing that. And in the first 11 months, I grew to um, like uh, 10,000 subscribers. I have no idea when I hit my first 1,000. Everyone's like, well, when'd you get your first 100? When'd you get your first 1,000? I have no idea. I had my head down just trying to make something better. I wanted the quality of my work, the quality of my product to be better. So I wasn't worried and looking about growth. I kind of looked up one day and I kind of somewhat mortified to find out I had an audience because <laughs> I didn't, I still didn't think what I had was good enough. And I was like, people are watching this and people are going to judge this. And I also wanted to just make it a better experience for them. And uh, it really pushed me to make things better. And I was always unhappy with my edits. I was always like, could have said that better. Why am I so stiff? Why do I feel bored watching my own video? And I was just so very aggressively critical of my content that I don't think I ever celebrated really my milestones. So... What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.